an on time God he may not come when you want him but he'll be there right on time oh he's an on time God yes he is hallelujah hallelujah he's an on time God oh yes he is he's an on time God yes he is Yes, he 
Jesus said, be not afraid, only believe. Can you say praise the Lord? You may think if you're walking down a dusty road and your only son is laying in a coffin and you're on the way to the burial, that it's over and it's too late and nothing can be done. But Jesus said, stop that procession just long enough for me to reach out my hand and lay it on this boy. And praise God, he sat up in that bar and was made instantly whole and resurrected by the power of the living God. Can you say praise the Lord? Everything that was brought before Jesus, it was too late and the damage had been done. The lepers had already been eaten up. The dead were already embalmed and buried. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. The blind had already been sentenced to bed by the wayside. But every time he came on the scene, time was taken out of the equation and the eternal anointing and power of God delivered those oppressed people and set them free. And can I encourage you this morning to quit climbing the old mountain of unbelief Amen. and go into any situation as though it were too late Amen. and as though it were over. Amen. And don't just reconcile yourself to do without. Amen. Get out of the time realm. Yes. Get over in the eternal realm. Amen. But the judge said he's too I don't care what he said. But the lawyer said he can't. I don't care what he said. But the company said they wouldn't get I don't care what they said. Oh, but my boy said he'll never spit. Don't care what he said. Oh, but my daughter said she ain't coming home. I don't care what he said. Get out of the realm yes. of the in, of the, uh, the the scene, the temporal, the that's moments. Hello. But Jesus is more than a moment. Amen. He's the whole day. They ain't but one day in the Lord. Come on, somebody. And a day where the Lord is. A, and a thousand years is. They, Pentecost just happened the day before yesterday. They just got filled with the Holy Ghost. The day before yesterday, Peter and John, Mary the mother of Jesus, James and his brothers were sitting in the upper room talking in tongues in Jerusalem and Galilee. Somebody say, praise the Lord. That didn't happen way back then. That was just the day before yesterday. And God has woke us up in this third day and said in the third day, I'll raise you up. Hallelujah. And we are here today because of what happened yesterday and the day before. Can you say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah to God. So think like God thinks and all these little things won't bother you no more. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We bless you for being here today. We still got a lot of folk out on what's up with that. But I tell you, we've been having church around here. Praise the Lord. We had a wonderful meeting uh, Wednesday night. And they had a wonderful group in the back. And we just praise God for how He's blessing and moving. We were able last Monday to mail a check for $800 to the Philippines. Praise the Lord to meet the needs of the pastors down there. Hallelujah. And I believe that there was uh, about a little over five that went with it. So praise God. That will give them a great way to start helping these pastors, getting them in something that's more temporary than just living on the platform. Amen. Amen. Get them in at least a good cottage somewhere if they have to rent it where they can have heat and electric and all and, and be took care of. So thank you, thank you for giving to the work of God. Praise the Lord. Sister Gladys is coming along. She had three vertebrae repaired on Monday that were fractured. And then uh, she left the hospital Friday 
to go to uh, some extreme therapy, intense therapy to get her back up on her feet and walk and pray the Lord will grace her with a determination and a faith to just see every bit of that enemy in her body put under her foot. And I believe every step she takes in that therapy, she's just crushing the head of all that arthritis and all that mess that has tried to latch itself onto her. And we just pray even this morning that the Lord will let a holy anointing come on her and will cause her to recover. Praise the Lord. We pray the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith will save the sick, but the Lord will also raise them up. He doesn't just get them to where they, 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 they're healed or whatever the pro problem was. He brings them back to wholeness. Amen. And completion. And we thank God for that. We continue to pray for Sister Sue Fortner for the Lord to touch her. Amen. In her breathing and just strengthen her in her body. And we're just looking to see wonderful and mighty things of the Lord. Hallelujah. Be praying about the end of this month as the 20... Uh, 22nd, 24th. Brother Lynn Howes will be with us. Praise God. He'll go to Sister Betty's church on Friday night and Saturday night be the same meetings like we usually do. Friday, Saturday there, Sunday morning, Sunday night over here in Bartow. So if uh, you can at all get free enough to go and, and help support the crowd and the and the ministry at Sister Betty's church, I know that she would appreciate that. They are always so good to load up and drive to Bartow. Amen, when he's here. And so he could do, just do us wonderfully well to give her the same support that she gives to us. Amen. And if you can at all be in any one of those night services, I know it'll be a blessing. I'll tell you, I drink from that man of God when he's here because it's wonderful to be exposed to that realm of anointing and that kind of revelation that flows in his life. Praise the Lord. And I thank God that he's found it a place to return to. Hallelujah. Every Every year and I thank God that he's knitted us together so we can stand here in light faith and have the heavens open over our head praise the Lord and I pray that this will be the greatest most wonderful time of meeting that we've had with him yet amen and just help me pray that God will just really open a vein of supernatural flow and give us what we have need of this morning we're getting ready to receive the tithe and the offering if you'd be so kind as to provide prepare yours and as you're standing on your feet with that gift this morning we're going to make our confession unto the Lord that lets him know we acknowledge his blessing his word and we acknowledge it so much that we do give into his kingdom amen everybody together now this is my seed God gave it to me I now reinvest it into his great kingdom for the working of the ministry. And I expectingly await a return harvest in every area of my life. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah.
How many of you believe what you were singing earlier? He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. Oh, praise God. How many has got that revelation? That that same Jesus, praise God, though he may be in another form, uh, which is called spirit, uh, he is what? He is here. Hallelujah. And if he's here, what are we going to do? We're going to celebrate his presence. Uh, we're going to worship around his throne. Uh, we're going to sing, praise God, and dance and tell the world of this life. Amen. Until Zion sees eye to eye. Praise God forever. Thank you once again for being in the house of the Lord this morning. If you have your Bibles, we'd like to call your attention to a passage in Songs of Solomon, the fifth chapter, the fifth chapter of the Songs of Solomon. And we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to read uh, verses 8 through 16, eight verses there, and then we'll leave there and go into the 133rd Psalm and read from there. But right now, we're going to read out of Psalms of Solomon, the fifth chapter. Last Sunday, I preached to you uh, on both services out of the third chapter. Amen. And we were discussing how that bride is coming in <coughs> to the glorious anointing for this day and for this time and for this hour. And you've got to understand, we sing it all the time. There's never been a day like this day. Because it is one day of the Lord that is not a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's, a, it's an eternal day that God has always had ready for the saints to come into. Glory to God. The Bible said that even it was said of Jesus, Thou art my son, this day, this day have I begotten thee. Praise the name of the Lord. How many know that wasn't just a day of the week? or a day on the calendar. But that spoke of a day in God. Amen. When they're coming forth. And, and how many believe we're at the same place as Jesus Himself was as He came became manifested in the flesh. Only we're here in the flesh. But there's another manifestation that's getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. In this earth it's called the manifestation of the sons of God. In other words, that which is in us is getting ready to come up on the inside and flow out of us rivers of, of living water. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. <laughs> and so we were preaching and teaching from this on Sunday to you as particularly uh, given headway to that verse especially in the evening services said, uh, you know, who, who is this bride? Uh, where is she coming from? What does she look like? Uh, well, she's coming up from the wilderness and uh, and, and when they see her, they think she's a pillar of smoke. Hallelujah. She's so clothed with the glory of God's presence. And not only that, but he said everything about her, all her garments smelled like myrrh. In fact, he tried to name off some spices she smelled like. Finally, he said, looks to me like she's been by the ships, of, amen, of, of the merchants of spices and, and has been in everything they've got. Glory to God. Now that is a picture. Hallelujah. We we rode we we're riding to Orlando Friday, and uh, so I somehow or another we got in a teaching session in the car, and I taught my kids from or uh, from uh, uh, the Parkway all the way where we were we were going to one of those uh, Epcot we went to, and I taught them from there all the way into Orlando on tops and shadows of the Bible. And how that they would never understand the Bible unless they understand types and shadows. Uh, and we were going through some beautiful things and talking about how, you, you know, uh, uh, Aaliyah was a type of the law and the old order and, and, and she gave birth to ten sons, which is a type of the Ten Commandments. And then Rachel was the chosen, the beloved, and, and she gave birth to two sons. Praise the Lord. Joseph and Benjamin. And of course, Joseph is speaking about Jesus and Benjamin is speaking about the sons of God coming forth in this earth. And we went through all these things. And you, you, you're you going to have to know that the Bible, the Old Testament, amen, is the New Testament. What? Concealed. But the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And when we come to the Song of Solomon, we can go back in Chronicles and read that Solomon wrote, oh hallelujah, a thousand 
chosen, and I believe it's six or, or three songs uh, out of all the ones that he wrote. Glory to God. This was the song of songs because this is the bride song. This is the bride coming in yeah. to her anointed place. Hallelujah. And so she is coming up out of the wilderness. I know Penina's teasing us right now with all her numbers. Yeah. That's right. Uh, that, that's what she did to Hannah. Yeah. She, 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 she became, the Bible said, her adversary. Yeah. Amen. Her accuser. And this is what she was accusing, accusing her of. If you've got something in you, why don't we see it? If, if you really can bring forth the child, why hadn't it happened yet? Look at me. My church is full. My house is full. You little pastors that are holding on to God from who? Don't you give up. Don't you stop. Don't you cease one bit. I don't care how much Penina is in your face bragging about the numbers. You get on in the holy place like Hannah did and you intercede. Come on now. Until God sends forth the word and you will give birth to a man child move. Because that's the whole purpose of the bride coming in to maturity and coming into intimacy is to receive of the seed and give birth to a move of God in this earth. And listen to me, church. This move will not look like any other move. It will not be like anything we've ever seen before. It won't have to be petted and pampered along and built up by man. It will be a full-grown, well blown. Hallelujah. Nobody will have to hunt a way to fund it. Nobody will have to find anybody to let it in. It's going to have authority. It's going to immediately be caught up to God and His throne. That means it's going to have all dominion and all authority. We're not going to have to run people down to let us preach His Word. We're not going to have to hunt somebody down that will have it. But glory be to God, the law is going to go forth. Well, praise the Lord. Out of Jerusalem, the Word of the Lord, out of Zion, the Lord of love Zion, He has chosen it for His holy habitation. And the Bible says that it is the set time to favor Zion. Hallelujah. What is Zion? That's the high call. That's the Word for this hour, that's the church who's come out of the wilderness. That's the ones who believe that saviors are going to come on Mount Zion and judge the Mount of Esau. Revelation says they'll follow the Lamb whithersoever He goes. They're not bucking the wheel. They're not tired to talk God into something. They are submitted to the Holy Ghost in this hour. And they're ready for a move of the Spirit. They're crying right now for the move of the Spirit. We have seen man's way. Yes. Elijah was fed of a raven. But after that, he was fed of a woman. Yes. Even though he was fed of a woman and it was supernatural in its supply, when the famine was over, guess what? The miracle was over. The barrel went back to normal, and so did the cruise of oil. But afterwards, he was fed of a supernatural angel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who fed a hunger rather than the natural hunger. He satisfied yeah. the hunger of his heart and his soul. Yeah. And how many of you was here Wednesday night and heard us preach about when Jesus was drove in the wilderness? He underwent intense hunger. And the old enemy tried to get him to satisfy that hunger with natural means. But he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Don't let nothing, don't stuff your hunger with nothing natural. You go on and endure the pain of it and pray through. God's got us something supernatural and mighty, and we're not going to have to compromise and sell out and prostitute ourselves to every place to get them to like us. We're just going to stay put and stay prayed up and God's going to show up. Amen. And the Spirit of God's going to move and hover yeah. and brood and flutter and stir something in our spirits. And He's doing it right now. There's a great stir that is going on. Hey, now that's enough of that. Let's get into the Scriptures and read together beginning in verse 8 of the 5th chapter of the Song of Solomon. Verse 8. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if ye find my beloved, tell him that I am sick of love. Glory to God. And this is what they said. What is thy beloved? 
more than any other beloved. <laughs> and oh, fairest among women. Boy, they're not calling her, uh, they're not calling her ugly no more, are they? <laughs> They're not accusing her glory to God and, and coming against her no more. They're calling her, you're the fairest among women. Hallelujah. And, and she said, why is he more than another beloved that you so charge us? In verse 10 she said, oh, hallelujah, my beloved is white and ruddy. White means heavenly, ruddy means earthly. He's divine. He's more than a man. He's very man and very God. Hallelujah. He's white and he's ready. He is the chiefest among 10,000. And listen to this. His head is as most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are as the eyes of dove by the rivers of waters washed with milk and fitly set. How many understand she had to have a revelation to be able to speak on such terms in such depth? There's coming an hour, brother, when we're going to know Him as we are known. He said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And in this hour, the Holy Ghost is peeling back the veils of man and the facade of the flesh, and He's opening our eyes to a new dimension of His Spirit and His glory. And we're not looking through anybody's glasses, but we're looking through the Spirit and we're beholding His beauty. Glory to God. Oh, she said, I never heard such a description. She said, let me talk about His head. Oh, let me talk to you about His hair. Oh, let me tell you about His eyes. Come on now. Woo, she said, them eyes is fit this set. They look like rivers of waters. Oh, glory to God. Verse 13, she said, His cheeks are like a bed of spices, uh, sweet flowers. Uh, his uh, lips are like lilies, uh, dropping with sweet-smelling myrrh. Yes. His hands are like gold rings set with barrel. His belly is as bright as ivory overlaid with sapphires. It sounds to me like she's gone beyond the flesh. I never have looked at nobody's flesh that looked like sapphires. But Moses said when the Lord came down and walked on Zion, that the whole pavement underneath his feet was as it were of a sapphire stone. Can you say, praise the Lamb of God this morning? Oh, aren't you ready as a bride to go deeper than just the surface? We know about what we've learned in Sunday school, and that's wonderful. It brought us to what we learned in church. We know what we learned in the congregation and it's wonderful. It brought us to the hunger we're at today. Amen. And it's awesome to hear the wonderful things as we describe Him and we do preach about uh, the earth realm and how He moved and touched it, how He looked and for 33 and a half years. But how many know after 33 and a half years He crawled out of that body and got in another play, another way, another form and now we're listening to a woman way clear back in the song of Solomon. Solomon got to singing prophetically he got to writing prophetically and the pen was took over by the Holy Ghost and the Lord made his tongue the pen of a ready writer and instead of writing about a natural man because remember the Lord had not yet appeared in a flesh body and the only way to know him was to know him by revelation by the Holy Ghost allowing you to look into and Solomon looked and said I see a head that is like fire I gold. I see locks of bushy hair on his head black as a raven. I see eyes that look like rivers of water. I see pools of milk. I see lilies that drop with sweet smelling. That's not the description of a 5 foot 10, 180 pound man. That's the heavenly way of saying he's divine and he's lovely. He's wonderful. He's beyond humanity. He's divine and he's Godly. Yes. Well, I'll take a Methodist nod this morning if that's what you got. Hallelujah. Somehow, the Holy Ghost has got to make Jesus 
more real to you than just a man who walked on the shores of Galilee. I've got to see more when I pray than just a man that used to be. I've got to see something that I can relate to. I've got to smell that glorious fragrance of Him breaking out in my life. I've got to see something that applies to where I'm walking. Amen. Well, glory, I mean, he'd get so excited in the beginning, but he said his lips are like lilies dropping with sweet smelling myrrh. His hands are like fine rings. His belly is as bright as ivory covered with sapphires. I like this. His legs are like pillars of marble set in sockets of fine gold. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. When Solomon got ready to build his temple, you know what he put in the front of that temple? Two pillars. Oh, glory to God. And one of them was named Jacob, and the other name was Boaz. And he put two lilies on top of them two pillars. Are you listening? And they didn't hold nothing up. They were just there to be glorified just for the glorification and the beauty. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe one of them is Christ, and the other is his church. Church. I believe one of them is the Lamb and the other one is His bride. Can you say praise the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. He said His countenance is uh, as leaven and excellent as the cedars. I love this, folks. This is the summary of it. His mouth is most sweet. Yea, He is all together lovely. Say it with me this morning. Yea, he is all together lovely. Woo! Now what you've seen here is not the description of one man. What you've seen here is a description of a many-membered body. What you see here is a unity and a oneness in the Holy Ghost. What you see here is she can't talk about him and he can't talk about her without sounding like they're talking about one another because they're experiencing the same realm and measure in the Holy Ghost. He's altogether lovely. She said, this is my beloved. This is my friend. Oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. Praise the name of the Lord. And the beauty of it is, if you'll read and study the whole Song of Solomon, he'll describe her as much as she describes him. Well, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And so there is a oneness there, a a, in that third chapter we've been reading out of, they said, where's she coming? They knew where she come from. She come from the wilderness. Then they wanted to know where she was going. You found out where she was going. She went into the bed of Solomon. Why? Because she was going into the house of his mother's espousal. Somebody say, praise the Lord. She was going to a wedding. She was going to a marriage. And he brought her into that covenant. And then he said to her, I want you to look. There are 30 valiant 30, men that stand by this bed day and night with swords gird on their thighs. I, I want you to rest here. I want you to know you're safe here. I want you to know no harm is going to come nigh you here. If you get in relationship tight enough, brother, they ain't no fear. Perfect love. Come on now. Cast us out fear. And that fear that you're not going to make it and that fear that you won't survive, it will leave you because everywhere you look, there will be mighty men of valor that are angelic hosts of God as well as songs of deliverance. That will come past you about in the night seasons. Can you say amen? All right, one more scripture here before I get going and can't get back in Psalms 133. You know the scripture. Behold how good and how what pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head. Uh, that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. Uh, I want everybody looking at that verse to say, first of all, oil on the head. Then say oil on the beard. Now say oil on the garments. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Edible soda bakataya. And as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descends upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord hath commanded the blessing, not just a blessing, but the blessing. Hallelujah. Where is, where will we find the blessing? Wherever the oil flows. Hallelujah. G.C. McCurry has a statement I love. God will only speak through a burning bush. Yeah. Hello. If your fire's gone out, no wonder you ain't hearing from God. Well, brother, what do I do? Well, Paul told Timothy, stir it back up. Yeah. Stir it back up. Can you say amen? Yeah. For there the Lord hath commanded the blessing, even life, yes. even life forevermore. Hebrews chapter 1 says, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above all thy brethren. Yes. Praise God. I want you to know before it can go anywhere, it has to be from above. Every good and perfect gift comes from where? From above. What exists in the from above realm? The Father of spirits and the Father of lights who is also called the Father of glory. Can you say praise the Lord? Uh, unity spoken of here is not meant in the way that many mean it. It is not just getting a bunch of people together. You can organize anything you want to, but if the Spirit of God don't breathe on that and bring forth a oneness in there, then that does not mean there was unity just because a bunch of people sat in the same room. There, If there's a thousand people, there's a thousand mindsets. If there's a thousand people, there's a thousand opinions. If there's a thousand people, you there's a thousand situations represented out there that can be as far apart as day is from die. You can sit in a whole Ghost meeting, and if you don't yield yourself to God, the old mind will take its roller coaster ride, and you can sit there for 45 minutes and never receive one touch from God because you're so caught up in the necessities and the mundane things of life. Only the Holy Ghost can produce this union that the psalmist is talking about. It's not just you nodding at somebody and smiling hello, it is a coming together under the same anointing and the same head and flowing in that uniqueness of his divine order and power. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For be assured this day, saith the Lord, that I'm doing a knitting. I'm knitting heart to heart. I'm knitting the fathers to the sons. I'm knitting together this great family of mine in this earth. And every joint will flow with a supply. And I will fitly frame this temple and bring it together. And not a sound of a hammer shall be heard therein. For it shall all be according to my divine order and law. And yea, they shall see and flow together, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. Everybody say the word unity. What is unity? It is a unit. It is a, a forming of one unit. It is no division. It is not me trying to get my ministry going and you trying to get yours going. But it is a flowing together, a streamline in the one head. Glory to God where all things flow in sufficiency. Praise the Lord. It is not me seeking out my own agenda. It is not me trying to call a meeting to order because I want to, to, you know, just to see a big crowd. I love a big crowd. I know people hear me preach, think I'm against me. No, I'm not. I'm all for it. But I can tell you now, the Holy Ghost will have to bring it in. It doesn't matter what we try to do to unify the body. It has to be a spiritual union. It cannot be done just because you want it to happen. It has to be birthed of God. Yes, Birth of God. Citywide gatherings are fine if God's ordained it and told you it'll work. Yes, it will. 
But if you're just trying to make something go, whether it's out of just a good motive or just a good kindness of your heart, save your money and save your breath and pray until God bursts something new. Amen. Because there's no way for us to call a unity and oneness to happen unless God does it by the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. We've tried everything. And I, when I say we, I'm talking about the system. Yeah. We personally have not because we know it has to be oil flowing out of the vessel. Amen. Yeah. But with we, as a system, the church has tried everything from, from water bottles to popcorn to, to holding concerts to everything in this world, indoors and outdoors, to try to build an army. Amen. Hello, church. Yeah. And at best, Sometimes it's half full, and sometimes it's not even. We get our eyes on a certain place where God's moving. All of a sudden, everybody thinks, if I can just get to that geographical location. But the truth is, when you leave that geographical location, you will be blessed mightily. I'm sure there is nothing wrong with going to Holy Ghost meetings. Sometimes God will tell you which one to go to. But I'm telling you now that if you, when you leave there, you will be dragging the same you home that you drug up there. And if that you don't have a change, then changing your geography ain't going to help you on the inside. It has to be something that happens to your heart. It has to be a spiritual matter. Can you say amen? Well, if I just go to this church, yes, and they'll make you mad like the other one did in a month, then where are you going to go? You've done been to all of them now. They've never one know you. And now you're having to move out of, even out of the town and the county to go to a church because all of them around there have seen you. And know you. Right. Well, praise the Lord. Churches today, instead of being built out of a prayer life of crying out for God to send sheep into the fold, seems to be built off of everybody's leftover members. It's got mad and left here and got mad and left there. Are you listening to me? People in this town even have run a circuit. Have they been to every Pentecostal church in this community because everyone made them mad? Well, guess what? If there's seven churches and you found fault with all seven of them, could you please set you up one of them full-size mirrors and go stand in front of it? Sometimes, my friends, the change that needs to happen is not in our neighbor, not in our husband, not in our wife, but there has to be something break loose on the inside of our own spirit. And before you have unity out here, you're going to have to get unity on the inside of you. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians 4, 3 that we are to endeavor to keep the what? Unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace before we get unity in the classroom, before we get unity on the church pew and before we get unity in the ministry we need a unity in the spirit hallelujah something on the inside of us has got to quit walking and fighting the plan of God has got to quit trying to war amen to God has got to lay down and submit to the Holy Ghost praise the name of the Lord that's on the inside of us unity of the spirit comes before the unity of the faith everybody's pushing now for the unity of the faith I want everybody to believe like I do forget it friend if God don't he said it this morning already if God don't reveal it to them they're not going to see it anyway you can choke hold them and poke it down their throat and force feed them and I'm telling you now it will not come until there's something that takes place in the spirit realm and when we begin to unify in the spirit realm then something will happen in this building right here without us having to work or labor we will see explosions of the power and the glory of God but as long as we're still having to make it happen mechanically then I can tell you it's not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is fresh and new and inviting and warm and friendly and gentleman-like and kind. He is a teacher. He is a guide. He is a leader. Oh, praise the Lord. He is a revealer. And if we will get ourselves in the unity on the spin, the spirit on the inside. Hallelujah. Uh, I've often explained to you that the, the, the psalmist uses the word pleasant there. How pleasant it is. Hallelujah. And I've explained to you over and over again how that when you're playing on the piano and the organ, 
things of that nature, guitar, everybody plays the same key. If the organ's in G, the piano's got to be in G, the bass has got to be in G, the flat top's got to be in G. But when it comes to the, the, the orchestra instruments such as the wood instruments and things like that, you'll have one uh, clarinet playing in B flat and a sax playing in F. Hello, cello's playing in something else. Have you ever heard an orchestra warm up? It sounds like the cats is dying. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You can't take it. Everybody's honking their own sound. Yeah. And all of that sound will never come to order unless a conductor, yeah. a conductor has to get up before that sound and that conductor knows how to bring every one of them into the order they're supposed to be. And when it does, it becomes harmonious, it becomes unified. And let me tell you, we can try all day long to get everybody together. But if we'll just let the conductor, which is the Holy Ghost, get up in these meetings and begin to guide our spirits into all truth, there will be a harmonious, there will be a wonderful, melodious sound of heaven that will fill this house. Are you with me? Jesus. Amen. Far more than just shaking hands, taking fellowship. It's the high priestly prayer of Jesus in John 17, which is for this body to come into the same glory as the head. Yeah. Jesus, the divine eternal, almighty God of all flesh. Are you hearing me? Yeah. He's the God of creation. Yeah. He created it all. And He stepped out of that glory and came into this earth and made himself of no reputation. Hallelujah. His reputation of a heavenly order was he's God. He's almighty. He's creator. He's all powerful. He's omniscient. Come on now. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's God of all flesh. He was before all things. And by Him all things consist. But He became of no reputation. He came unto His own and His own didn't even recognize Him. He was the world was made by Him and the world knew Him not. Somebody say praise the Lord. He made Himself of no reputation. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Isaiah 53 said there's no beauty in Him that we should desire. We look at Him and we hide from it. We can't take it. We don't even know what it is. It's beyond recognition. How can we even relate? to that. Are you listening to me? It's like in the old tabernacle. The, the tabernacle had some of the most beautiful dyed garments you ever seen. Tapestries and hangings. Over, but the bypasser on the outside never knew that because the last thing they did was cover the whole thing with an old gray badger skin. And Jesus took all that glory and all that power and all that anointing and wrapped it up in Adam's skin and became obedient. Now, come somebody say praise the Lord. He made himself. He being in the form of God. God it not robber to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and became like unto the seed of Abraham. Praise the Lord. He didn't become like the angels. He became like unto his brethren. It behooved him to become like his own creation. Yeah. Amen. He was made like unto his brethren uh, both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are one. And for this cause he is not ashamed to call us his brethren. He identified with us in the lower realm. He before he ascended he descended into the lowest parts of the earth. Glory to God. He became tangible. He became real. He became touchable. He he became visible. He was the visible image of the invisible God. He was not an air or a wind or a puff or a spirit or just something that went by. He was now in the earth and on the earth. Oh, glory to God. He had never traveled by time or space. He had always moved by spirit and eternity. But now he must walk from Jerusalem unto Galilee. He must walk unto Samaria. He must walk into Judea. Hallelujah. Oh, he afterwards grew hungry. He didn't have to be hungry. He was God Almighty, but He made Himself of no reputation. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. That's the oneness I'm talking about. He condescended to them that were of a lower degree. He was not intimidated by Adam's failure. He was not scared of our sin. He was not frightened by the state we were in, but He was touched with the feeling of our infirmity. He made himself susceptible to man's thought, 
thoughts and opinions. He could stand in a room and discern the thoughts of everybody that was in that house. Somebody say yes. praise the Lord. Oh, I feel the Lord this morning. He was, a, he was all man, but he was all God. But that all God was hidden by that all man that was on the outside. There's not a doubt about it. Praise is the mystery of God to this. God was manifested in the flesh. He was his Christ reconciling this world unto himself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very God and very man. You, 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 Brian, what is your lover? What's your beloved more than all of our beloveds? She said, oh, well, my mind's white and ruddy. Thank you, Jesus. She said, that's why he's heaven right. He said, he is. But he's also ruddy. Ruddy means red, earth. It's the same root word for Adam. Well, glory to God. Well, what's the difference in your beloved? Well, he's more than a man. The first Adam, very glory. He is the living soul. But this Adam is the quickening. The first one is that the earth earthly. This one's the Lord from heaven. Yes, Somebody say amen. amen. I'll tell you, we better preach a revelation of Jesus, folks. Because I got news for you. If you're going to look up and see what she saw, you're going to have to get something in your spirit than just believe it that he's some member or some part of. I'll tell you, he's the whole kit and caboodle. He's the first and the last. He said, I am Alpha. I am Omega. I am the first. I am the last. I am the beginning and the end. But I am also he that was dead. But now I'm alive forevermore. He said that, oh yes, he did. What manner of man is it? We never heard a man speak like this. Even the winds and the seas. Come on now. Obeys him. Jesus said, or the Hebrews said, he's anointed above all his fellows. Honey, let me tell you, Jesus yes, taught him in the book of John. He said, I'm from above. He said, you're from beneath. He said, the reason I know you're from beneath is he that's from beneath is earthy. He speaks about earthy things. But he said, I speak about things from above because I am from above. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Then he turned right around and said that he was the man that had the spirit of that measure. John, when writing him up, said he was preferred before me because he was before me. I'm not worthy to lie his shoes. But he that sent me to baptize said unto him whom you see the Spirit descending on and remaining. He it is that baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. Let me tell you how to know if God's in. It'll last. It'll hang on. When everything else turns loose, he la When all the smoke is cleared and all your struggles are over, you'll still have that Holy Ghost fire that on the inside of you. If it's a God, it'll last. That's what they said about the apostles in the book of Acts when they came in there and said, What should we do to these men? Should we shut them down? They said, No, leave them alone. If it's a God, it'll last. And Amen, amen, amen. Who are we to stand against it? Nicodemus had to go out by night. Zacchaeus had to get up in a high tree. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Barnabas had to yell over the crowd. The woman with the vision of blood had to press her way through. But every one of them found out there was a divine flow on the inside of that man that would make the sick well, that would make the dead live again. Hallelujah! When are we going to press through that flesh and lay hold of that power that's on the inside? When are we going to quit being satisfied with the outer shell and the superficial realm of the flesh? I'm tired of the flesh. I'm tired of yours and I'm tired of mine. I want to break through this morning. Oh, hallelujah! I want to touch that inner description. I want to see those eyes of fire. I want to see that hell of gold. Amen, amen. Every one of them, every one of them pressed through. You're going to get unity. You're going to press through something. You're going to get the oil to flow. You're going to have to press the olive. Hello. He ain't just man. He's God. 
But I'll tell you now that God is inhabited that, that God is in clothed yes, and in cloak with a flesh man called Adam. And he ain't like the first Adam. Amen. How do you know? Because he ain't begotten of no earthly man. Yes. He's begotten. Oh, praise the Lord. The Word in the beginning already existed. He didn't get no birthing. He didn't get no begat from Joseph. I tell you, everything he was, he had always been. And evermore will be. Amen. And you and I have got to move past what's already been. If we're going to lay hold of what is right now. <coughs> Paul called it the high calling. Well, God, I'm going to have to hear now. I preach my soul happy as well. Paul calls it the high calling. We can call it many things. Revival, move of God. Come into Zion, manifested sons. They all speak of the same day and the same order and the same thing that we're after. Yes. Are you listening to me? We're after a bride who can speak with such description as what we've read this morning. Not because she's known Him by the flesh, but because she has come into the unity of the Spirit. Are you here? When she could describe her more, she said, in case you had to see what I'm trying to tell you, he's, he's all together lovely. This, this, this whole body is made up. Oh, oh glory. What is the word telling? We're born of his bone. We're flesh of his flesh. Amen. And so John knew all these things. John said of him that that's what Jesus said. Whoever you see the Spirit come upon and remain. He it is that baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. He said, that, and then Jesus began to talk to Nicodemus, spoke to him about being born of the water and the Spirit. Nicodemus said, we know you're of God. Oh, it took everything he had. He stuck his neck on the block, brother. He was a leader and a teacher in Israel. He was of the priesthood. Amen. He came to Jesus by night. Didn't he do it? He came by night. Christianity is full of night, folks. Right now. But the day will get brighter. And right in the middle of your night, well, glory, the Lord's going to tell you to rise and get up and shine because your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Praise the Lord. And He came by night and when Jesus got through talking to Him, He told Him, He said, The Father's put all things in these hands. Oh, hallelujah. He said, you know why? Because he said he gave not the Spirit by measure unto him. He didn't have a measure. He had all of it. But all of it was condensed down to an individuality. There was one man. Let me tell you something, folks, about God. He's one. Now, you can't move any further in him until you get that straight in your spirit. People, people just get all kind of quacks and qualms with me because I uh, so so uh, push this issue. You won't come into any other revelation before you come into the revelation that our God is one. That's the first revelation in even the Orthodox Jews who don't even see our ways of Christianity can look you in the eye and quote to you the Scripture, Hear, O Israel, come on now, the Lord our God is one. He is not many. He is not three, four, five, six. He is one. Now, does he have many ways and manifest? Sure, he does. Absolutely. He can manifest in many forms and many ways. He can get in a bush. He can get in a donkey. He can get in a rock. Come on, somebody. He can get in a cloud. He can get in a pillar of fire. But he ain't getting in that now because he's already got in us and he's found the house that he wants to dwell in. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you've got to discover the God side of the Christ. You've got to understand where he come from was the real beginning. <laughs> the beginning of beginnings. When was that? You'll never know and I'll never know. It's beyond anything we can grasp. What manner of man is this? But if he stays in prison, folks in that flesh body, that's where a lot of them got him in church this morning. All they ever preach about and talk about is that natural man. 
that natural body. Yes. And that's the extent of their faith. And that's the reason that many of them now preach in the fundamental realm that miracles have run out. Are you going to amen that? And, yes. and that gifts are over. Right. And that prophecy don't exist. They will say that it went out with the apostles. But that don't make no sense. Because when the apostles floated it, Jesus wasn't even here in the flesh. He was here by the Spirit. And the only reason they did what they did is because the Spirit caught on the inside of them. They're defeating their own doctrine, ain't they? Hallelujah. Yes, sir, they preach that cessationism. The old gifts is done. Healing is done. Miracles are done. Prophecy is done. Tongues. Oh God, they hate tongues. Tongues is of the devil. That's the truth. That they'll tell you about. They write it in their own literature. I got my book over there. I'm gonna flip it right over and show you where I've underlined it and marked it. Where Mr. Larkin said that anything to do with tongues, shouting, being slain in the spirit, or any kind of such things happening are acts of demonism in the church. And some of you Pentecostals still teach and preach out of his book. And some of you still put up his charts and teach out of his charts. And he's one of the blind mice that led the church into such a blinded vision because you don't even believe in the Holy Ghost. And if you think a man who don't even believe in the Holy Ghost is going to dictate to me how God's going to move in these end times. You don't even know about the end times unless you've got the Holy Ghost. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 No, we've got to move past the flesh. Amen. See, Jesus felt that you read your scriptures and I got to land this plane till tonight and I didn't even get off the first page. Amen. But the Holy Ghost can just do it. Amen. But you've got to understand something, folks. Even Jesus sought to be loosed from that individual body. Hallelujah. If you'll study places like John 12, and if you'll read other places like, I believe it's uh, 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 Luke 12, where he said, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and oh, how am I straightened until it be accomplished? The word straightened there means I'm in prison, I'm bound, I'm held back. Something's got to happen in John 14 and 16. He explained to them that it is expedient for you. I've got to get out of this body because if I don't get out of this body, you won't experience hallelujah. Well, and how many know the ultimate purpose of God was to live in His people? And that's the exact reason why Jesus came. Yeah. Is to open back up the way for that to happen. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord, somebody. It is expedient. Everybody say expedient. I'm going to read a powerful verse to you and we'll say a few comments and then go home for this morning and come back this evening in Ephesians 1 and chapter, chapter 1 and verse 10. This is the purpose that in the dispensation of the fullness of times God might gather together in one all things where? In Christ. In Christ. Or in the anointing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If he stays in prison in the flesh body, it'll go no further than the individual. This is where the Christ comes in. Christ is the anointing or the anointed one that goes way beyond the individual. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I'll say this. Everything will have to come under that anointing. Everything will have to come under In fact, I'll quote it on a little further. Everything in heaven and in earth yes. has got to come under the Christ. Yes. And the Christ is not the flesh. Yes. The Christ is what's left after the flesh. I said the Christ is what's left after the flesh. Yes. Father, make us one. Hallelujah. 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 He didn't mean let's all join hands around whatever unit we're campaigning for and sing a song. That's not what he meant. That's the world's version of it. Now I want to ask you something. Now and I want you to think about it. Ever since probably the 60s and the 50s, people have called themselves unified. 
and they pick it and ride and stomp and snore and gather and this and that. But today do they not still war over the same issues and ride over the same things? You know why? Because they never were one. That was just an outward expression of trying. And how many believers are still living in the trying realm? Right. It's awful because of the way the church portrays the Christ. Hallelujah. All they do is try to do right. Try to live right. Look up here at me and let me tell you something that you must believe for the rest of your life. You can't live right. And you can't do right. Every time Adam tries, he's going to fail. Yeah. The only thing that can't fail is Christ. Hallelujah. 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 What did Paul say? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth on the inside of me. Somebody say praise the Lord. They were saying, well, what does that do with my living? How do I control myself? You give in Him. You abide in Him. That's a, oh, glory, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, neither can ye, except ye abide in me. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Come on now. Oh, glory to God. And then He said, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I've ordained you that you should bring forth much fruit and that your fruit should remain. Herein is the Father glorified in that you bring forth much fruit and that whatsoever you shall ask in His name, glory to God, it shall be given unto you. Hallelujah. So how does this gospel work? It works because it's already here. It is now. It is done. Christ has finished the work. Praise the name of the Lord. It won't work as long as you've got to fulfill some ritual, some ceremony, some type of law or rule. If that's how you identify with Jesus, then you'll never get to the description we read this morning. To describe Him that way, you have to have had Him take you into His chambers. And that ain't all. I want you to know something, little bride. The first thing he's going to do is walk over there and pull that veil right. off of your face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he wants you to look into his eyes. Yes. And she said, oh, you daughters of Jerusalem don't have no idea. I have looked into his eyes. His eyes are like rivers of water. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. So thank God for this hour and this day. Yeah. When God is calling us into a fresh anointing for the for the end time, and we're an end time people, and that don't mean we believe we're sober with. That believes that means that we believe God is escorting and translating and transforming and transitioning us into a new age of the Spirit, and it's going to take a spirit walk. Because if it ain't spirit, it ain't kingdom. Some of our dear kingdom brethren, bless their hearts, they think they're so far in the kingdom because they've gone and got dead as an old Lord. They don't have any life coming out of them. But I want you to know that ain't kingdom. Kingdom is life. Kingdom is power. Kingdom is everything. Can you say praise the Lord? I read an article just last week on the internet that said that in some of my studies, I, I wish I hadn't read as far as I did, that said, Oh, you know, it, 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 uh, uh, down playing the lead on the hands and prophecy and things of that nature, saying that how uh, we move way beyond that. And when I got through just what I read, I felt dead from reading it. I think that brother better go back and get some more hand laying yeah. and some more prophecy. How many of you are thankful God's presently walking amongst the candlesticks in the church? And how many believe it's time we did like this woman? And John has said, oh, his feet's like brass. His eyes are like fire. How many want to see a vision, not of a human being, not of a flesh man, but of the oneness of this Christ body, God flowing into us and us flowing out into this earth with His anointing. Glory to God. Well, are you blessed for the Word today? Stand up and give God thanks for everything.
He's done in this service. Believe Him that when we come back tonight, the anointing will only grow and intensify and increase and that God will give us yet even deeper rounds of understanding. Amen. Father, bring us back into this house uh, and bring us a crowd of people. Uh, and Lord, send visitors into this place uh, and let us see a wonderful movement of the Spirit of God. Oh God, we'll take time tonight uh, to go through this altar and minister personally. Say everything you want to say. Do everything you want to do. Touch every person that will gather here. Lord God, let us get the real vision. Hallelujah. The spiritual vision. The spiritual union. Uh, glory to God. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.